The MapTex Labeler Transformer is a new add-on available for FME 2013. It gives you the ability to add cartographic labels to your FME output, enhancing your spatial data and bearing in mind important factors such as placement, collision avoidance, orientation, and text styling. In this demo, the first in a two-part introduction to MapText, we'll build a workspace that adds labels to a data set of Vancouver neighborhoods. You'll be able to see how to use the MapText labeler to apply rules and get the exact output you want. This is intended as a preview of the wide variety of tasks that can be accomplished with MapText, and there are many powerful ways to label your data that you can learn about on FMEpedia and safe.com. The first thing we'll do is read in our data set. In this case, it contains one feature type, polygons representing neighborhoods in Vancouver, each with an attribute containing the neighborhood name. Next, we'll drop in a MapText Labeler Transformer. Notice how when you first place the transformer, it contains no input or output ports. We need to define the layers and attributes in order to give it ports. We'll add a neighborhood layer, which we can easily do by typing or by importing the existing feature type. Then we'll set the ground units to 25, which means one font point is 25 meters. The target format is FME generic, since we're going to write out to the FME data inspector. There are different styling and color requirements for different output formats, and the MapText labeler offers precision control for each of these. Next we'll click Configure. This is where we define the styling and rules for the labels. The feature type here is actually the MapText feature type, which is the geometry type. We'll set the geometry type as a polygon. Other options are lines, points, or obstacles. An obstacle means it doesn't let a label cross over it. Now let's click on Style to change the styling for this label. We'll write the neighborhood name. And note here that you can label based on a more complex expression. For example, you can include the population or elevation based on a certain numerical comparison. The font will be Times New Roman, and we'll set the size to 10, and set the color. We'll click OK here, and then we can open the rule properties and define how the label should be placed. The way it's laid out seems fine for now, but we'll run the workspace and see. The last thing we'll do is check the label box to activate it. We can leave this first column priority as is. An example of where setting the priority would come in handy is if you're labeling big cities and small cities. The big cities label should have a higher priority when the data set is displayed. Now we have our rule and styling all set up so we can click OK and close the MapText labeler parameters. You can see that an input and output port has been added to this transformer. Let's connect it to the source feature type and output the labels and polygons to the data inspector. And we'll run the workspace. And you can see that some of our neighborhoods are now labeled according to the rule and style we specified. However, some labels are missing. These are actually some of the longer labels, which tells me we're having trouble fitting the text properly. If we go back to the map text parameters, we can modify the rule properties again. This time we'll check Allow Stacking. This will allow for longer text strings to be split into two lines. We'll run the workspace again, and everything will be labeled successfully. You can see that labels like Dunbar Southlands are the ones that weren't able to fit without allowing stacking. So there's a basic preview of what you can accomplish with the MapText Labeler Transformer. For a more complex example of this transformer, including how to use the related MapText Styler Transformer to buffer the distance between labels and geometries, be sure to check out part two of this demo. For even more examples, visit FMEpedia and the FME and MapTex webinar. Thank you for watching.